So are you guys ready to learn about plants? Yeah. yeah. I can't hear you. You ready to learn about plants? Yeah. Yes. Yes. When I found out that I was going to be teaching in the garden, I was a little bit, how do you teach kids, you know, with special needs about the garden? How do you get them involved? What is the curriculum? So those are some things that I was thinking about when I was told that um, I would be a part of the gardening program. Does anybody know the function of the root? It sucks up the water. What? It sucks up the water. How do you know all this? I watched Magic School Bus. So oh my goodness, it sucks up the water. I think it's the, the key is trying to get the teachers on board and believe in what we do. Um, we are a special needs school, so basically what we try to do is have the kids to have a sensory experience, um, allowing them to explore the garden, allowing them to become familiar with the garden, have less restrictions, and just allowing them to explore the, you know, the texture, the smell, just focusing on the sensories. This is the nutrients. It may not look fully grown, but it has a lot of nutrients in it when it's fully grown. Participate in the garden builds self-esteem. Uh, self-esteem meaning that they actually participated in something where they saw it from the start to the end. They actually are able to bring it home to their parents and say, Mom, look, look what I have. And then the parents are able to maybe cook the things. So they're taking like lettuce home, they're taking carrots home. Those are the things that they're taking home where they can see an end result. And then when they see their parents involved, then they get really excited about it. My first objective is to basically developing a lesson plan and looking at the curriculum of the lesson plan. I basically look at how do I spark the kids' interest when I'm looking at the lesson plan. Going through the curriculum from uh, first grade to fifth grade and seeing what curriculum meets the needs of the children. I'm looking for hands-on and interactive materials, bugs. I'm looking for soil. I'm looking for how to water the plants. I'm looking for tools, things that they can actually hold in their hand and actually engage in while we're doing the activity. Because each kid is different and unique in their own sense, meaning that they learn differently. So basically you might have a kid that's tactile, meaning that you have to have them feel and touch. You might have a kid that's a visual learner, so they need to see. You might have a kid that can hear things. So you, you're dealing with those components that as far as teaching the kids, and that's why when I look at a curriculum, I'm looking at the senses and how it could be tactile, how it could be you know, sensory and addressing those needs. So the next step in, in Google Docs, I create an outline of the actual story. I'm looking at the curriculum, I'm looking at Green Art Planet video, but also looking at other resources like going to Google. Okay, so for example, if I'm doing parts of a plant, you know, there's different tools that I utilize through the internet and bringing out materials that I can utilize during that activity. So I create a folder and basically I put all these elements in that folder. If we're talking about the, if, if it's soil, then that's that soil folder. If we're talking about plant parts, that's, that's that plant part folder. And this is something that, you know, they we'd work on for the whole entire week. We create a story, a social story. Hey, John is going out into the park. He's going to look for some plant parks. Uh, let's get these parts. So those things, type of things that are helping them understand the whole purpose of the lesson. So I go to the Green Art Planet website, I watch the video and then I understand the video. For example, plant parts. I look at how uh, they're teaching the lesson. What are the objectives? And once I'm able to do that, I take what I have from that video and incorporate it into my lesson. So I'm modeling what Green Art Planet does and to incorporate into my lesson. I become the Green Art Planet expert through them. They're in the ground and they suck up all the water and all the nutrients from the ground. This is the first part that we're going to talk about is the root. So the next step is I find the objective and then I create a question to answer that objective. Basically what I'll do is I'll say what is soil and I'll spend the entire lesson exploring what soil is. It's important to keep it simple so that kids can develop an understanding of what they hear and what they see and what they feel. And that is modeling certain, uh, certain things and behaviors during the lesson activity. So the next step is gathering materials for the lesson. I grab uh, plants, I'll grab samples of uh, soil, I'll grab um, 
bulletin boards, I'll grab tools, things of that nature that I might need during the lesson. Yeah, when I blow up, I'm a sore high like Peter Pan. In real life, be living out my dreams. If I'm waking up, it's in a foreign land. Whole risk covered up. So I like to add my own personal activities to the uh, lesson. Basically, I'll do a rap. I'll do a song, we'll sing, we'll dance. I'll bring in other materials, basically just to spark interest and get the kids excited about going into the garden. I definitely recommend that other teachers add their spin to lessons, um, music, uh, videos, anything that might spark the student's interest during that activity. So once I'm in the garden, I basically want to get the kids involved. What do you le learn about plants? What do you know about plants? <laughs> if they grow, they really give us oxygen. So trees, plants, anything that does help with our organism. So I'll do an introduction to the lesson and you know see the kids basically get their attention when I begin. I'll see what their prior learning is and what they know about the actual activity or the, the objective or the actual goal. For example, if we're talking about soil. Hey guys, do you know what soil is? Do you know why we need soil? So it's basically to see where they're at and to spark their interest. And then from there, I will do a hands-on activity. And it could be something as simply as digging their hands into the soil and they touching it, smelling it, things like that. Each lesson that I engage or introduce to the kids usually is a week process. One thing I recommend is being patient uh, with the students because each child or student will learn differently. Uh, some of the challenges is behaviors. Some of the, you know, like trying to keep all the kids involved. How do you keep every kid? Because each kid learns at a different level. So basically how to keep them to remain engaged in the activity. So that's why I do a lot of hands-on activity, a lot of touching, a lot of feeling, but I also allow them to explore the environment. So at the end of the week, we give the students a quiz. And basically we're trying to accomplish the objective. So for example, it might be identify four parts of the plant and then also explain the function of those plants. Can somebody show me a fruit? Let's go pick a fruit. Come on guys, let's go. And we use different materials. It could be doing, uh, uh, using the, the smart board. It can also be cutting and pasting where they're actually taking a part of the uh, plant and labeling. And then also we might can have discussion about that as well. So something else that I like to do during the course of the, the, the lesson is to record the wins and to actually allow the kids to talk about what they've learned and actually engaging in uh, the activity. It's really fun. Like it's not easy to grow stuff. Like it's like the hardest thing to grow is, is a pumpkin. That goes in the fall. So once I'm able to have the videos, we share it with staff, we share it with the students. They would actually see themselves uh, participate in learning, and then we also share it with the parents. It's important to share videos and what the children learn because we want participation. What it does is it shows that we are showing kids how to be engaged and be excited about the garden. So when parents see that, they see something visual. When other teachers see that, other teachers want to be a part of it and participate. Mint. Mint. <laughs> These are actually not growing yet because you're actually getting ready to grow. Yeah. I'm getting ready. But I don't know which one is going to grow and you can smell it. Uh, what I would say with teachers who, who have students with special needs and are nervous about it is that I think it's important to exp allow kids to explore their environment, allow them to be free when they are going into the garden and coming up with lessons that will be conducive to learning and simplifying those lessons to address every different learning aspect of a student. I know this, uh, the garden does help the students and it helps them by basically they can be a part of um, developing life skills. Life skills is taking care of something, understanding about nutrition part of uh, vegetables, things of that nature. They can learn about taking care of about what do you do, basically getting dead leaves, uh, watering the garden every day, um, harvesting the garden. So they develop job skills, life skills, and basically they get to take these things home and then they get to eat them. So happy. Everyone can get more healthy foods. 